well hi everyone and it looks like we're live again um been away we've been away jane and myself in um italy um enjoying some peace uh in a house without a television so <laughs> we've been keeping away from all this chaos and i see a lot of you have been asking on the um uh comments where are you craig where are you jane but obviously we you know we don't tell everybody when we're away from home but anyway today if you're here for the first time uh this is all about um predictions and uh clairvoyance and uh, uh talking about all the topical issues that are happening in the world today um from a clairvoyant sort of perspective with myself craig hamilton parker who's a medium so it's we're going to give you some i suppose if i'm in touch with my spirit guides a bit today some headlines from heaven um so we're going to talk about what's going on particularly what's happening in the middle east particularly what's happening with iran um and israel and um, some thoughts about the upcoming thing. So this is this is live. So some of you are coming in with live chat now and you'll be able to ask me questions later on in the show. I have to give you a few thoughts first um, to have some thoughts together, particularly if we can keep to the topic as much as possible. Um, and we'll have a thought, some thoughts about uh, where we're going in the Middle East. So welcome to Coffee with Craig. Hi guys, and nice to see you all again. It's um, it's good to have had a break, and it's good to be uh, back again and having some thoughts about what's going on. And I know you've been missing the show, and the Friday show will also be live. And if you're here again, don't forget always try to give these videos that Jane and I do a like because it helps the algorithm. It helps the algorithm to um, uh, push it up the, the pages a little bit. Anyway. So lots has been happening, hasn't it? We've had um, a few of the things I've been speaking about, particularly earlier in the year, have started to come about. And it gives me cause for concern sometimes this, because, you know, when I see things happening on the news, I, I often think, God, blimey, I said that. Um, and it, it concerns me because, you know, <laughs> what else have I got right? You know, uh, for example, I, I'll put some clips up later on, but I did talk about the, the Baltimore Bridge um collapsing or a uh, you know you'll see the clip anyway actually say about Bel baltimore but I, I, I it was up on the patron pages and they pretty much agreed that that's what i was seeing uh the cake cancer i i also spoke about as well and the israeli um strike on iran is also in my 2024 predictions uh the ones i made on the 14th of september so with that in mind I'll, I'll explain some of the things that perhaps i've already said about this but also let's expand upon it uh, and have a think about some of the um the things that are happening i also you remember in the eclipse video i did i mentioned about this is a time of earthquakes and you'll also notice that in another video I did earlier in the year, about 2023, towards the end of 23, for 2024 predictions, I said there would be an earthquake in New York. And that actually happened at the time of the eclipse. So um, a lot of the stuff around this period I'm, seem to be getting right. Um, I don't claim to get everything right. I often say it's like through a mirror darkly. You see part of it, you, you get a feel of it, and you might get the basics right, but you might get some of the details wrong but then other times you get things bang on and i think it's the same with all of us clairvoyance you know we we don't always get it all right those that claim to get it right all the time are probably self-deluded but um yeah but there's a lot going on and i also did say in some of my earlier predictions as well that around this same time when it breaks in the middle east we will simultaneously get the problems in taiwan which hasn't happened yet but makes me wonder is there something going to be brewing there too at this time? So what's going to happen? 
what this I'll just share with you some of my thoughts first, but then I'm going to I'm going to do something a little bit strange, which I've done before. <laughs> Lock me up, guys. Um, I'm going to tune in a little bit and I'll be a bit more sort of slowed down for that. And I'll take your questions and I'll see if I can get some direct question answers from spirit guides. A sort of it's not a trance, but it's a kind of a light overshadowing uh of the spirit that happens when i do this so i'll be in a sort of a bit more fluid state of mind and, and we just see what comes up um and sometimes that shocks me like the the baltimore bridge thing came up um uh, when i was doing one of these um sort of type of fluid type of clairvoyances for you so um have some questions in mind on topic if we can i can't sort of start sort of, you know who's going to be elected president of chad and things like that I, I need you know i need something on topic for you um and then we'll see if my guides can give us some influences there and some ideas so so i saw i said and it hasn't happened yet has it but the thing i said in 2024 at the beginning of the year i said that um israel is going to strike iran but i also said that Israel is going to strike the Iranian nuclear fa um, facilities. So um, it hasn't happened yet, but now on the press, they are talking about it. This could be a, a possibility. So it looks like my prediction there is coming true, um, which is sad because this would mean an es ex escalation of the terrible things that are happening in the Middle East, it, it would push it into a much more um, ferocious type of uh, conflict. Um, but my feelings are, that I'm, I, I feel I'm still right with this, you know. I mean, I lived in Israel for a while in the 70s, so going back a long while now, but um, I was on a kibbutz. And I kind of got to know a little bit about the um, Israeli mentality. Um, and I made a lot of good friends there. And I made friends with a number of people that had actually some of the older people that were looking after us, telling us what to do to cut on the fields and things, um, who were actually in Belson and things. And the Israeli people have not just an iron dome over Israel, but they have an iron spirit, as it were. And it's like that never again mentality is so embedded, um, quite understandably, that if a bully comes and punches you. You can't step back. You have to punch them 10 times harder to bring them down. It's the kind of the way it is in life, sadly, isn't it? And if someone bullies you at school, um, if you if you let them do it, they do it every day of the year. Um, but at some point, you've got to stand up and give them so much that they never want to do it again. And they go and find another victim. And this is what I, th I don't think Israel's, you know, at the moment, Everybody's screaming for diplomacy here in the UK. We've got our very weak um, prime minister, um, Sunak, who's who's kind of um, calling for appeasement, calling for, can we time it? Let's say Israel's done very well out of this. You know, you've done all right. You're, you're good. You've, you, you knocked down all the drones that were attacking you. You know, uh, actually, it was the US and the French and the British that knocked down most of them, the Jordanians. Um, so, but I can't see Israel listening to any of that diplomacy from Britain, from France, who are pu pushing in here. Every country of the world is sort of saying, look, don't retaliate, don't turn the other cheek, turn the other cheek. But this is an eye for an eye situation. It's an eye for two eyes situation because I feel that um, Israel will go for it with um, Iran. They're going to hit them. And I feel the logical thing as well. I mean, although I've said it already with clairvoyance, but also with our sheer logic seems to me to feel that why not hit them in a place where they can't hurt us again? Let's take away the one thing that um, has uh, threatened Israel, which is um, a potential nuclear attack. Now, my thoughts are, though, that there's been I've been had a feeling, a strong feeling that Russia's done something pretty um, bad in the background, and so has North Korea. I get a feeling, and I think the governments of the world know this. That's why we got American, um, uh, American aircraft carriers and things in the region. Um, that the um, I, I I feel I see that uh, they've been given um, a delivery system for nuclear weapons, and it may be that Iran actually does have a nuclear weapon of some sort. Um, and that's why they've got to hit them now while it's possible to bring these missiles down if anything was launched. 
Um, the sort of stuff that they've sent with the drones and things have all been pretty junky sort of stuff, I believe, from what some people have said. But, you know, um, but my feeling is there's a lot more going on in the background. And Russia in particular has done a deal with them, done a deal with them over the drones that they got for Ukraine and done a deal with them and said, well, what do what does Iran want in return? We don't know, do we? But they've been given something. They've got something that gives them the confidence to be able to throw a load of stuff over at um, 300 um, drones and missiles over into Israel, which they would never have dared have done before. So they've got something that's given them confidence. And North Korea was also involved in all these negotiations as well. So have they got some of the technology uh, with North Korea and has also um, Russia been sharing their technology to help them get greater support over Ukraine. So my feeling is that this it needs to be hit, actually. Um, oh, horrible that one should think like that. But um, I feel this is a, Israel's last chance. My feeling is that the first thing I'm going I see is I'm seeing a big thing with Mossad going on, too. I'm seeing some um, James Bond type of explosions going on where they've got into a facility and blow it up but simultaneously i'm seeing uh, i'm seeing an air attack so my my feeling is that there is going to be a, a strike on um iran from israel and it will be on their nuclear facilities uh, and that's something i've said ready um how will this escalate I, it would obviously escalate more. It would cause more troubles. Um, I, it's interesting. I've been looking through some of the um, uh, Nostradamus um, predictions. Um, it's interesting when you look back, because I've got a number of books from Nostradamus. I don't base my predictions on Nostradamus at all. I, I just, you know, I just know about them. I, I, I feel I've got to go with what I've got. Um, but it's interesting how when you look back, for example, I've got a, an old friend, a one from some while ago, back in the early 80s, uh, this one came out. And this, this, this version of Nostradamus talks, interprets all the um, uh, quadrants as um, a war with, is, with, of, with, with the Islamic world. And, and it even talks about their, the idea that um, uh, there would be a pact between um, Iran and Russia. So I thought, well, that was pretty close to what was going on and then it also talked about an eventual evasion uh from from the muslims to uh invade italy and through switzerland into france and the eventual occupation of rome and the downfall and burning of paris so that is quite interesting but then when you look at a more modern version this one that came into the press more recently by mario redding who died but also has had, had some some quite bang on stuff coming through from the Nostradamus. Some of those same things are reinterpreted as China. So where do we go with that? And this is always the problem with these type of um, uh, riddles almost that, that, that um, Nostradamus writes. Is he getting it right? But I, I think he is in, in many respects that, 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 you know, going back to the earlier interpretations, um, could it be that um, this Russia and Iranian pact is going to be something that the world's going to have a lot to deal with but i i see it escalating unfortunately which means you know all fronts israel is under attack because it would be from uh, lebanon it already has been under attack from yemen and uh coming across from syria and things unfortunately we've seen jordan and uh, uh, protecting its airspace and so forth um and uh, my thoughts are there's the 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 world leaders know a lot more what's going on than we do, obviously, but um, they've seen this coming for a long time and they know something we don't. They've not told us what Iran has up its sleeve. They've been so cowardly in putting sanctions, proper sanctions on Iran. Um, if they put the full sanctions on Iran, then, you know, the, the people might have rebelled more like they would like the women were doing in Iran. Um, and there's something they know that we don't. And I think Iran has much more capability than we've given them credit for. Um, because if all of those missiles had gone across and been shot down entirely by the um, Israeli defense system, most of it had got through and we'd have had a mass, mass slaughter of um, Israeli civilians and again. So um, I feel it's going to escalate. I feel America will be drawn in. I feel 
uh, Britain will be drawn in. They already are, really. And France will be drawn and possibly other countries, too, such as Germany. I think China will stand by the side. Um, I can't see China other than giving some um, pretend sort of um, uh, olive leaf of we can help to sort this out sort of thing. Um, they're, they're pleased because they've got their eye on Taiwan, which is all in the background there. Saudi Arabia is going to be a very important for this, in, in my feeling, too. I've had a strong feeling that Saudi Arabia, um, and I mentioned this before, that Saudi Arabia would become a kind of an arbitrator. I, I, I get the feeling that there's more known about that, too. For example, one of the first things that Trump did when he became president was go to Saudi Arabia. Of all countries, why go there? Because Saudi Arabia holds the uh, negotiating keys to so much. And, of course, oil. and Oil prices are going to soar when this happens. We're going to see massive um, soaring of oil prices, which means <coughs> yet again, the, the, the normal consumer is going to be faced again with a bleak winter with extraordinary high oil prices and oil shortages. I see that happening. And I feel this is going to affect the stock exchange very much as well. And we're going to see some serious um, uh, damage to the stocks. And I don't see cryptocurrency as being any safe haven. In fact, I feel that's not exempt from this too. So we're going to see some economic, real serious economic stability because of this, because it's going to create a great deal of um, uncertainty. And of course, once America's distracted, once the West is distracted by this, it means the other pariahs, such as Putin, possibly, awesome lost my camera for a minute, uh, other priors such as Putin, camera don't like that name, um, will are going to keep pushing forward hard in, in Ukraine. That We can see further and further attacks in Ukraine. In fact, I saw the nuclear facility in um, Iran being hit, but I also feel that the nuclear facility in Ukraine will be um, seriously hit. <coughs> Not quite as bad as Chernobyl, but I think we're going to see some serious problems with radiation leakage there. They have hit it already a few times, um, but I feel there's something much more serious coming up um, in the coming months uh, with that. And I also saw um, a, an aircraft carrier being hit by a Russian um, missile, not necessarily fired by Russian forces, but I feel as if somebody's been given. Um, a missile, and it doesn't hit the American carrier, it hits something British. So I don't know if a British carrier is also out there or is on its way out there or, or not, but I feel it's a British carrier that gets hit. Not sunk, but I feel as if there's something like that going to be going on as well. This was something I was seeing when I was doing my meditations earlier with this. So, um, so these are my main thoughts, I think. I think these are the main feelings I have, that, that it is an escalation. Um, we will see. Um, we will see also some of the other things I have mentioned is that there would be more arbitration, for example, from Saudi Arabia, but also Turkey getting involved, um, again, as an attempt to arbitrate, to try to calm the situation down, and similarly with Egypt as well. So Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Turkey uh, and less so Jordan, I think they're just going to try to remain on the sidelines neutral, um, will help to calm the situation down. Do we get out of it? Yes, we do eventually get out of it. This isn't an um, end of the world scenario, although it is a very serious disruption and a worrying position, I feel. Will nuclear bombs be thrown around? I don't think so, even though um, Iran might have something like that. I feel it's going to be stopped and I feel that the nuclear facility, once it's hit, will, will start to bring the possibility of greater peace in the Middle East. And eventually, I also feel in Iran that um, the Iranian regime will tumble. It will tumble from its own people. Its own people will eventually um, turn against ir the Iranian regime because, let's face it, this is a medieval type of thinking that goes on in that country. Um, it's extremely. Um, blinkered in the past. And 
I don't know how many people, how many of you know many Iranian people, but every Iranian person I've met, and I've met quite a few, and I've done quite a few readings for Iranian people, many of which have left Iran, but sometimes I've not been away from Iran long. I've always found them absolutely lovely people, actually, with quite modern thinking. Um, perhaps it's we meet the richer ones because they're the ones that can get out of the country. But um, I always felt quite a dignified sort of people and an intelligent, obviously, people. Um, and how they can keep, I've not talked politics with them, but um, I would think that um, we will see um, a much more of a resistance towards the, 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 the what is becoming a bit of a shaky regime there. So uh, those are the main thoughts that I've had uh, first off um, for some of the things I see ahead. Um, I've seen on, I've got a few notes in front of me here. There's anything that I've missed. So. Um, yeah, so those are the, the main things that I wanted to share first of all. So I think what we'll do now, um, let's have a, let's have a, um, a, a look at um, some of your questions now. So if you want to put your questions in, I'll see if I, I try to put them as questions. I know you've been commenting. I'm going right down to the bottom of the list here. So, so only the most recent ones are coming up now. Yeah, so you're saying that you're seeing this type of thing. So let's have some thoughts about this. I'm going to ask me a question and, and I'll, I'll see if I can tune in and get my guides to answer it on topic, if we can, please. Um, that's one. <laughs> Funny how we always get Trump questions. Um, I think Trump will be very. Uh, let's, look, let's look at the. I mean, this is probably going to still be my thought through rather than getting it direct from spirit. Let's see if I can feel some thoughts with that. You see, I've already said that I feel that Trump will be um, the president again of America. It's going to be a close shave, I tell you, but um, I feel he'll get out of this whole Stormy Daniels business soon. Um, You see, my feeling is I feel that this whole conflict is going to um, really sort of backfire on Biden because he's not been, although he's giving full backing to Israel and say we stand solid behind you, my feeling is in his heart, they're more on the side of Palestine. Um, so he's got his foot on both sides of the fence or his the regime behind him. We call it a regime, but, you know, the people behind him. Um, so that's my thoughts. I'm trying to see if I can see it. Right. <coughs> you know, what I'm seeing is I get I get Trump's not going to be very well soon. Actually, I get a feeling illness around him. Um, I feel tiredness and illness. Um, he's a very strong person. I mean, very tremendously determined. But I, I get a sense of that. I just get to see what... I see Trump doing something with Saudi Arabia. That's it. There's something with Saudi Arabia. That's uh, and that I don't, that seems to be later on. It seems to be in the presidency, and it seems to so we got a, a deal done. It's through Saudi Arabia. Something is brokered with Saudi Arabia. I don't know any more than that. Sorry. Let's see if I can find a question. You're chatting too much, guys. Just please keep to some questions for me. On topic. I know you're asking about all sorts of things here. Um, not easy to give a time frame, guys. I mean, I, 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 with clairvoyant stuff, it's like it's there in the etheric. And because we have kind of free will, we can pull things. Things happen according to kind of spiritual time, in a way, as I would describe it to people. Sometimes when it's ripe and it's ready, it happens. It happens only works in our individual lives. You know, you might see. You know, for example, Doris Stokes saw me meet Jane. Actually, she did tell me the date I would meet, but she didn't give me the year. Right. So I had to date, but not the year. Um, so it, it, it kind of when it's ready. Uh, come on, guys, give me some proper questions here because. Oh, OK, that's an interesting one. Yes, because this was something I also saw 
and and that was meant to, i meant to mention this um but i saw um that gaza the the north of gaza is going to be um occupied almost permanently by um israel um it will go on for an indefinite period of time and gradually they'll start putting settlers in there it will become a bit like the way things have gone with the golan heights and i see them pushing the people of gaza south and pushing them into a smaller and smaller position and i also saw um because there's something i saw before i came on i meant to say this actually too i also saw part of the coastline of gaza being taken so a bit more of the strip of gaza so it's like the shape is not just the whole top of gaza but it's like the top and a sort of a a, a long strip down um so they've taken the prime prime some of the prime stuff and pushed um out the um <coughs> uh pushed out some of the gaza people from there so i i feel that's you know israel is furious and israel will um will 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 move forward with that i see you're asking all sorts of questions let's have just, just i'm just going to look i see the other questions coming up on lots of other things here but Will it be fully fledged World War Three? Will India also get involved? OK, that's an, that's a, a clear, nice, clear question. Thanks. Um, thanks for that one. So <coughs> I was getting a, a, some strong feelings with India. I think the whole history of India is going to be a very interesting thing. For the future um, India is going to become very much um, the country that helps bring the world out of the crisis um, eventually, because we're going to get these co these conflicts for a long way ahead. Um, but it will start to ease in, in the next three or four years. Um, India is going to grow in strength and India is going to be um, offering new sort of ways of thinking. You know, I'm very interested in India, as you know. So um, I, I love the Indian uh, concepts but of spirituality. But <clears throat> I feel this that India is going to play a big role in this, particularly when we see later on the downfall of China, because I feel that China is going to... Um, kind of break up it's going to be a revolution again in china in due course and it will break into multiple um countries or multiple you know in the past china fought between itself all the time you know it, it was thousands of people died millions of people died with conflicts internal conflicts between the um, cantons of china um but i see a quite a peaceful breakup of china ultimately and i feel india will have some influence on that um i don't see it becoming a fully fledged world war three though you could say if something's going on in taiwan something's going on in ukraine and something's going on in israel it is all around the world but these are three separate conflicts or albeit behind it are similar powers but it's, it's separate conflicts and most of the conflicts we're going to get in the world are all going to be fought in cyberspace they're all going to be sort of ai type things so this is going to be much more of that and i see india more as a peacemaker ultimately um but there may be conflicts in the future i feel between india and china um and uh, to the um uh, to the east of india uh and all up through possibly burma was burma um miramar and, and all up through there i'm seeing uh ultimately some conflicts and and ultimately india will expand i feel india will expand its borders one day and it will even gradually incorporate large parts of afghanistan but this is something for much further ahead but um it, it, i, I kind of get this picture of the world changing but as it changes actually when borders change that's usually a pretty bad thing but um i'm seeing i'm seeing actually um a, a much more peaceful world ultimately uh, as we move ahead with this. um we are going to get terrorism this is going to be a problem in in the upcoming months and, and of the end of towards the end of 2024 and into 2025 uh, i feel there's going to be terrorist attacks mainly um in france and britain I feel France and Britain are going to get some serious problems with this. We already had some uh, lone sort of wolves, as it were, um, causing mayhem in uh, Australia, for example, recently. But I saw things like a sports stadium being um, seriously um, damaged by a terrorist attack. I, I feel it. I, I see an, a drone, a radioactive drone drone as well over a city. It could be over London. It could be over Paris. Uh, somewhere like that, I see a, a, 
dirty sort of bomb type thing. Um, not a nuclear bomb, but nuclear waste um, from hospital waste or something like that, I, I feel, with this. And and I sense that there's going to be, and even Canada, I feel, is going to have a um, attack of sort, some sort. There's going to be multiple attacks. And you'll, you'll remember in some of my um, uh, earlier predictions, I, I also saw the advent again of um, a, a, um, air, air attacks, um, a, a, like um, not a 9-11 style thing, but a hijacking. And we thought we got over this because we got such high security. But I feel someone's going to make a workaround like that and we'll get something in that. So this is something that I, I, I was feeling. And it, it's going to be, I think, linked with what's going on here in Israel. Um, yes. And the, the West are getting already in. Well, it's already they're already called in. Um, a lot of this, of course, is Netanyahu's um, personal vendetta. He's come to the end of his career, a bit like Putin. They want to make their mark on history. These are people who consider themselves more important than ordinary people. They have a huge ego. So um, Netanyahu has always really been quite right wing in his thinking um, when it comes to um, his politics. And, and uh, he, I think he would want to see Israel in a position of strength, he believes. He likes to feel that he's partly fulfilled the prophecies, as it were. I'll, see, I'll just put some of your comments up as well. I'm looking here. Oh, that's another one. I've said that. <laughs> So you're asking lots and lots of questions off topic. Okay. So you're asking Charles and that. I'm going to do all those separately. You see, just trying to find someone's actually asked a question. There we go. Sheila, I can trust you. I know you'll always ask a good question. I haven't even read it, but I know Sheila. Uh, do you think this will be a catalyst for the mate? For the Iranian people to call for independence, can you give us any indication of when the independence is near? And that's a good question because I did comment on that a minute ago um, because I feel that's going to happen. Let me just see if I can get some thoughts on that. Does anything come that's unusual? You know, I I feel this the the women's movement uh, that's happened in Iran already has been tremendously significant. That it takes incredible courage doesn't it to to, to stand up against uh, a, a world dominated by these um very um sexist ideas of um, extreme islam and I, I i i'm seeing i'm seeing a i'm seeing a revolution there there's people on the streets there's people carrying flags I, why am i seeing why am I seeing red and yellow? I don't know what that means. I'm seeing red and yellow like flags. That's nothing to do. It's not Iran's colors or anything like that. I'm seeing red and yellow flags for some reason. And I'm seeing um, I'm seeing the Aitola and, and all of them fleeing. I get the sense I've, I've, fled, I've fled north and maybe into Turkey to seek a refuge because it's like a second Iranian revolution. And I, I I get the sense I'm hearing calls for the return of a, a Shah Shah or something like that that, that we want a kingdom again, um, and there's a big explosion in a hotel. Is it a terrorist attack on the actual um, regime of Iran? Like I see, it's like a big bomb gone off. Um, I also said earlier on that I felt something would happen in Israel like that too, but I, I'm feeling this might be in Iran itself. I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a, an assassination attempt um, to take out the leadership, and I, I'm getting there's women behind this. There's women behind this. It's the women's movement that's done this, um, and I'm seeing the rise of a very powerful woman in Iran. That would be very odd because even if there'd been a revolution, I think it would be go against so many principles. But I don't know when this is. I don't know how far I'm looking ahead here, but I'm seeing a very powerful woman rising in Iran. I said a similar thing about Russia one day would have this, but I'm seeing the rise of a powerful woman 
in Iran. And I don't know if she's a leader or she's an, there's a strong feeling of artist with this, um, as if she's, you know, got artistic ability and there's no one as an artist or something. Okay, so that's just random thoughts. Let's see what happens um, because uh, I just get these things and I just like to do this. Happens when you do a readings for people. You just, I go off and I start saying things and afterwards people say, oh, oh, that's right, Craig, that's right. Um, Thank you for your stickers, guys. I don't know how to link on those, but that's appreciated. I see that the system here says that some of you have given some super stickers, so that's nice. Thank you. Help support us poor psychics. Uh, <laughs> no, um, you're all asking about other things, here, so I can't answer those because I'm going to save those. Um, I didn't see anything about Scandinavia getting involved, but I think the whole I think the whole world's going to get involved in some way or this certainly involved in trying to sort of um, calm things down a bit, you know, and and, and uh, world diplomacy. You see, I remember, like I said, a long time ago when I was first starting off in mediumship, and I've said this before, but I say it again. I I was talking to my 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 teacher in mediumship. Um, he at the end of each session, he would go into a trance and do a bit of trance work. And he'd go into a very, very deep trance and we'd talk to his spirit guide. And it was like talking to another person because it was a very, the, the, the people that were in that circle that I sat in all be went on to become some of them famous mediums as well. So that the, the, we were very, very, very powerful. And we were in a tiny little room. It was literally a broom cupboard. And um, it was. <laughs> and we'd get seven of us or more in it. And um, sat around in a circle and you go into a deep trance. And I used to ask about the future of the world. Um, so even those early days, I was interested in that. This is going back when I was in my early 20s. And um, I asked him about what would happen. And, and a number of times he said the troubles in the world would come first and foremost from the Middle East. And there would be a war between Iraq and Iran. And that did happen. That was way before any of this was that did happen, but it, it, there was a long, as you remember, a long war between Iran and Iraq, which was fed by the powers that be to were flogging arms on both sides. And I think this is happening a bit now, also with Iran and um, uh, and Israel. We can sell to both sides in a war. You know, this is great. We can we can make money whether they win or they lose. That all went on, and he, and I asked, would there be a nuclear holocaust? Would there be a nuclear? Um, a, a, apocalypse rather you know what would happen with that and i was told no but i was told that there would be problems with nuclear weapons in places like north korea this is talking when i was 25 this is going back in uh, 80s you know early 80s and that's happened um and i said would there be a final war would there be and they said no there would not be the problem the what the problems of the world will get so big that it will force the nations of the world to come together as one to solve the problems because the problems can only be solved collectively they can't be solved individually and remarkably this is peter close the medium who's teaching doing this with and remarkably he also said while well, in this deep trance that the the environment would be another thing that would bring the nations of the world together because it would be so such a big problem that we'd never be able to solve it and there were only so it's only fringe people were ever talking about problems with the environment that time so i take a lot of um uh, sucker from that that you know the the, the world is going to be all right in the end and i my feeling is it's going to be all right in the end you know um i i've said to you before that i feel there will ultimately be a golden type of age i mean that's going to be an age of gold by golden i mean consciousness awakening spirituality because once people have awakened their spirituality then everything else falls into place um seek first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be given unto you or something like that said in the bible wasn't it that we seek the spiritual first everything else falls into place and if you think about the world we worry about it all the time don't we but when we look at um the world we think well one day we're going to leave this world you know, one day I'm 70 now. It's one day I'm going to leave this world. Not that far away, I expect. You know, not going to be, I'm not going to be another 50 years, am I? So one day we leave this world and we will look back and we will see, first of all, we will see our whole life. We will see all the things that um, have happened in our life, like an unfolding of a recording of it. 
know, we would see every aspect that's ever happened. We will feel all the things that others have said to us and with bad things. If we said a bad word to someone else, we'll feel their reaction. We'll see both sides of the mirror, as it were, when we go into the spirit. And we'll also see all the possibilities that could have happened in our life. And we see all oh, what would happen if I'd done this instead of I'd done that, if I'd followed a career in art instead of following a career in advertising then mediumship and all the rest of it and all the things you've done in life and the people you've met and who you dated and didn't follow through and all, all this all the things that happened you know will be there unfolded in front of you. and you will see it with a sort of a transcendence because you'll see it just as it is you will see it just this was what your life was this is the story of your life and the same thing applies to the history of the world we would see it with the same transcendence as if that's just the story. It's just the story that's been told. Um, so we we should not we should not bind ourselves to fear when we see all the things happening in the news and things like that. And it's not good for the world either if we do bind ourselves to fear. We should see it with that kind of transcendence as if we're no longer part of the world. And if we do that, we actually develop a sort of a power. Really, we develop a sort of a mental power to help bring peace and goodness into the world because we're not bound by fear. We're bound by knowing that everything will be all right in the end. I've sat many times with very high level holy men uh, when I've been in India and I've sat with them. And when you sit with someone that is really there, you know, you there's a sense that comes over you of everything's going to be all right. Everything in your life's going to be all right. Everything in the world, it's all going to be all right. You just know it. You're just with that same energy of the enlightened person who will sort of give you that feeling of it's okay. And they don't need to say anything they, they, without words. And I think that's what we've got to try to come to understand and get to that place, guys, where we just know it's going to be all right. And actually, it makes it all right as well. But that's because it, that's what transcendence is. It's just seeing it as the unfolding of a story and with that in mind maybe we can free ourselves from all this fear that's in the in the world and, and it's exaggerated and made worse isn't it by all the endless news articles that go on and on and on bombarding us from every direction um, because this is good and simple cheap tv right and uh, and we we get all embroidered into this this world of fear and it's generating bad thoughts. So come and join me and Jane on on um, Friday when we do our Craig and Jane show, because we're going to do some meditations then. And we'll, I'd like you to come and join me there and we'll share a live meditation to, to sort of see the world as a, in, in, in a visualization of the world as it should be at peace at one. Uh, and and the, the people of character and good quality character ruling the world and people more concerned with. Um, compassion and love than greed and uh, getting things from the world anyway so those are my thoughts so hopefully you've uh, enjoyed sharing today with me don't forget to put some um uh comments afterwards because i always appreciate your comments um and it, i i read them all every single one of them and uh, uh and your thoughts what do you think about what's going on in the world how can we solve things what should we do what can we do as individuals you see as individual people i think we can all do a lot we can become the changes we want to see in the world that's not me that's gandhi but that is the way to do it if you see bad in the world do the opposite and if all of us do that we'll soon sort it away, won't we okay thanks for joining me have a look in the description below if you want to find out about my books and any of the other services we offer with readings and so forth it's all there but um anyway thanks for joining me guys and i'll see you soon bye for now If you look back at my earlier predictions, and in particular the predictions I made on the, the newspaper, The Sun's um, website, I did actually say on there, the actual words were, there will be a flu epidemic linked to bioterrorism.
And my thoughts are that Liz Truss will make it to the final, um, be, the, be the next PM. I think she will actually have a final battle between her and Rishi Shunak. We've not seen the full end of Boris Johnson either, I tell you. But Rishi Shunak, actually, will eventually, I feel, be the next leader of the Conservatives. So I think there's going to be a few conflicts that Britain's going to be drawn into, including um, I think Russia is going to take some moves against Ukraine. I think she will make it past her Platinum Jubilee, which comes up this year. But I think after that, we'll see a sudden and quick deterioration in the Queen's health. And um, I think I think we might lose the Queen towards the end of 2022. There's going to be a huge, huge backlash um, uh, from over the Netflix programmes and screening because I feel it comes out in at a bad time. Charles will come to, to become King Charles. Um, but his reign, I feel, will be short. I said that um, Prince Charles would be hit by an egg. And of course, there it is, all in the press today. A marvellous person she is. She does something that extraordinary. Um, that could even um, even put her life a little bit at risk with the way she with the way she did this. Okay. Is there something also there that's not been spoken about fully? Did they also discover something with Kate that wasn't quite right? A huge swarm of people knocking the doors of Europe and America. Um, and I feel that Ukraine conflict is going to be a kind of a grinding conflict that goes on and on. I also feel that there's something going to happen in the Middle East as well. I, I, I feel as if there's going to be a sudden and unexpected thing happen in the Middle East. So I feel they're going to take it into their own hands and I feel we're going to get a strike from Israel. This is going to be one of the significant things in 2023.